again. Welcome back to year five of the Religious Education Initiative. This is week nine, day one. We're continuing our way through the book of Genesis. So last week, we saw Joseph's brothers return to Egypt, bringing Benjamin with them, and we saw Joseph greet them with joy, which he concealed with them, and then provide a feast for them in his own home, at which he seated them in the order of their birth, a fact which amazed them. We saw the brothers try to return the money which they had paid for the grain the first time they came, which Joseph had commanded be placed in their grain sacks. And we saw Joseph's steward lie through his teeth and assure them that he had their payment and God must have blessed them in a miraculous way, obviously telling this lie at Joseph's command. <clears throat> in all of this, we see Joseph treating those who had wronged him with tremendous kindness and generosity. And we see his brothers deeply uncomfortable with the vulnerable position in which they are, and profoundly conscious of their guilt for selling Joseph as a slave years before. This time we will see Joseph's final test for his brothers. This is uh, the beginning of chapter 44. Then he commanded the steward of his house, fill the men's sacks with food as much as they can carry, and put each man's money in the mouth of his sack, and put my cup, the silver cup, in the mouth of the sack of the youngest, with his money for the grain. And he did as Joseph told him. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away with their asses. When they had gone but a short distance from the city, Joseph said to his steward, Up, follow after the men, and when you overtake them, say to them, Why have you returned evil for good? Why have you stolen my silver cup? Is it not from this that my lord drinks, and by this that he divines? You have done wrong in so doing. When he overtook them, he spoke to them these words. They said to him, Why does my lord speak such words as these? Far be it from your servants that they should do such a thing. Behold, the money which we found in the mouth of our sacks we brought back to you from the land of Canaan. How then should we steal silver or gold from your lord's house? With whomever of your servants it be found, let him die, and we also will be my lord's slaves. He said, Let it be as you say. He with whom it is found shall be my slave, and the rest of you shall be blameless. Then every man quickly lowered his sack to the ground, and every man opened his sack. And he searched, beginning with the eldest and ending with the youngest, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they rent their clothes, and every man loaded his ass, and they returned to the city. When Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, he was still there, and they fell before him to the ground. Joseph said to them, What deed is this that you have done? Do you not know that such a man as I can indeed divine? And Judah said, What shall we say to my Lord? What shall we speak? Or how can we clear ourselves? God has found out the guilt of your servants. Behold, we are my Lord's slaves, both, he, both we and he also in whose hand the cup has been found. But he said, Far be it from me that I should do so. Only the man in whose hand the cup was found shall be my slave. But as for you, go up in peace to your father. Then Judah went up to him and said, O oh my Lord, let your servant, I pray you, speak a word in my Lord's ears, and let not your anger burn against your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. My Lord asked his servant, saying, Have you a father or a brother? And we said to my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a young brother, the child of his old age, and his brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother's children and his father loves him. Then you said to your servants, Bring him down to me, that I may set my eyes upon him. We said to my lord, The lad cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. Then you said to your servants, Unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you shall see my face no more. When we went back to your servant, my father, we told him the words of my lord. And when our father said, Go again, buy us a little food, we said, We cannot go down. If our youngest brother goes with us, then we will go down, for we cannot see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife bore me two sons. One left me, and I said, Surely he has been torn to pieces, and I have never seen him since. If you take this one also from me, and harm befalls him, you will bring down my gray hairs in sorrow to Sheol. Now therefore, when I come to your servant, my father, and the lad is not with us, then as his life is bound up in the lad's life, when he sees that the lad is not with us, he will die, and your servants will bring down the gray hairs of your servant, our father, with sorrow to Sheol. 
For your servant became surety for the lad to my father, saying, If I do not bring him back to you, then I shall bear the blame in the sight of my father all my life. Now therefore let your servant, I pray you, remain instead of the lad as a slave to my lord, and let the lad go back with his brothers. For how can I go back to my father if the lad is not with me? I fear to see the evil that would come upon my father. So we've seen Judah before. This is the first time Judah has done anything that we like at all. Uh, but let, let's go back here because I, I, I want to point something out that, that's important. Um, what Joseph has accomplished here with all of this, uh, the, the way he's interacted with his brothers, getting Benjamin there, if his brothers had continued as they had with him, hating Jacob's beloved sons, being jealous of Benjamin, hating Rachel's children, then bringing Benjamin to be with him in Egypt is a rescue mission. Uh, and, and if his brothers have remained as they had been, jealous for the possessions of their father, and really just caring nothing about their father, then who cares? Well, let's back up. I, I think Joseph, again, if his servant had, if the brothers had accepted what, what his steward said, which is to say, the one with whom we find the cup, he will have to come back and be the slave of my master. If they had let Benjamin go, and, and they offered, uh, rather, that they offered to go back, and, and the steward said, no, you don't have to come back. My master only wants to punish the one who's actually guilty. The brothers were free to go. They were free to leave. Joseph has fast chariots. He could have sent quickly, once he got Benjamin away from them, he could have sent quickly to get his father and bring him into Egypt as well. And then the brothers can fight over the inheritance if they want to. That could have happened. If the brothers had accepted the offer that was given to them to leave Benjamin and go away scot-free with food, with the chance to come and buy food again, because, you know, they brought their brother. They proved that they were just men trying to buy grain. They're fine. There is no compulsion on them to come back. They're free. And in their freedom, having been told by the steward, you don't have to come back. That's not necessary. My master is just. Without question, without hesitation, the instant that they see the cup in Benjamin's bag, they tear their clothes in grief, and they pack up their donkeys, and they go back again. They are not willing to abandon their brother to slavery. That's new. <laughs> they sold Joseph into slavery, Benjamin has been taken from them by force. They know Benjamin didn't steal the cup. right? But they're not willing to let Benjamin go into slavery. They didn't care about what the consequ consequences would be of Joseph's death to their father. But having seen his grief, having seen him as a broken man all these, de all these years, now they are unwilling. They are unwilling to return and bring the news that Benjamin has been taken. They're unwilling to kill their father with their words. They don't want the inheritance. They don't want that fight. They, 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 they've actually repented. And this is vitally important because the way this is set up, Joseph could have Benjamin. Joseph could go and get Jacob. The brothers who hated all of them and were jealous and wanted to have the inheritance to divide among themselves, they could have had it. It was on offer, and they knew it was on offer. But they're different from how they had been. And that difference allows the reconciliation that will come next time. They are, of their own free will, defending and protecting their youngest brother, whom their father prefers over all of them. The brothers are beginning to heal the evils that have come from the jealousy that they grew up in. That, that, this is beautiful. This is amazing. 
And then, of, of course, the, the thing with the silver cup, uh, it was common for the pagans to do the divination, to, to use the cup in some way to, uh, to tell the future to, or to tell the present. Uh, you, uh, this would be a, a matter of uh, interaction of, of, of the occult, of interaction with demons. Uh, but, you know, it's a silver cup. Joseph doesn't actually do this, but he's telling them he does because they would assume that he does. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, they come back. And Judah, and let's be clear, Judah is the one who hasn't been disinherited yet. Reuben is out. Reuben's not getting anything from, from uh, Jacob. Simeon and Levi are out. They're not getting anything from Jacob. Judah is the remaining oldest son. Judah has the most to gain from Benjamin being taken from Jacob and Jacob dying. And Judah is the one who stands up and says, take me as the slave. Let my brother return safely. This is incredibly important. At this moment, Judah becomes one of the two leaders of the family. Anyway, I think that's uh, where we can wrap up. I'll see you all shortly for uh, the day two reading. Uh, God bless you all.